Sometimes, it feels like the complete destruction of Earth is right around the corner. It's only a matter of time before the nukes finally drop and humanity is forced to live underground like a pack of rat people inside a parking structure. So, in order to get ready for that inevitable outcome, I'm going to prepare for my new subterranean life by playing video games that are about being underground. But if I'm going to be living underground, I need to scavenge for resources, which is where SteamWorld Dig comes in. <laughs> Despite its name, SteamWorld Dig isn't about breaking into Gabe Newell's house and looking for developer copies of Half-Life 3. Instead, it's actually a mining game slash black lung simulator where you play as a robot who walks into an old, dirty town and just starts digging, like a gopher trying to find your old incriminating tweets. The main gameplay consists of digging through dirt looking for gemstones and scraps of used metal before returning to the surface to sell your wares and repeat ad nauseum. Like a snake eating its own tail, or a New Year's gym resolution, the cycle repeats for eternity. But, in order to disrupt the monotony, you are able to buy items and upgrades with the pesos that you earn from selling your chunks of cubic zirconium and used mufflers. As you upgrade your character, you are able to dig further down and find more rare resources, until you finally unlock the secrets of... Oh, <laughs> sorry, I accidentally reviewed Utopian Mining, a Flash game with the same concept as SteamWorld that was released over a year beforehand. However, despite them both being the same game on the surface, once you dig deeper, you'll realize that SteamWorld is quite a gem of a game. Throughout the game, you'll find puzzles to solve, abilities to unlock, and even a few buried copies of E.T. for the Atari. You also have a torch that eventually runs out of light, which forces you to return to the surface to refill it, perpetuating the eternal spin cycle in the washing machine of life. One could argue that this is more realistic to how an actual mining torch works. And one could also argue that if robots had sentience, they probably wouldn't spend their time mining for unobtainium and old bicycle tires, but that's a bit too existential for my taste. Overall, SteamWorld Dig gets a diamond out of 10. It's not as good as everyone seems to think that it is, but it's still pretty nice. And it can probably be bought for cheaper than that chunk of amethyst that you bought at the shopping mall. While we're on the subject of chunks and eyes, I'm gonna talk about a game that has both of those things. And I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Godder is a platformer slash interactive cave painting where you play as a blob with cute little legs and a delightful little mask and an adorable array of huge fucking guns. Every level starts you off with exiting one tentacle, slaughtering a whole room of cave creatures, and leaving through a tentacle on the other side of the room. Once you die, you enter purgatory, and death allows you to choose different masks and guns to help you send these poor little cave-dwelling crow magnons to hell. Using guns isn't the only way to kill enemies. You can also jump on top of them to make them explode like a pinata full of lead. Throughout the game, you'll find different heads that you can equip to your character to alter their attributes, such as giving them triple jumping, extended health, or, if you're lucky, limbs. After copious amounts of cave exploring, you'll also find runes that you can use to revive yourself when you die, trade with the local shopkeeper for items, or you can give them to your local Wiccan friend on the day of the solstice. And by now, you're probably wondering, hey, what's the plot of the game? And you know, that's a really good question. A question that I don't have the answer to. They say that if you're watching a movie in a foreign language, you can still figure out what's going on if the actors are talented enough. And after playing this game that technically has no language, I've come to a realization. Goddard is a game where you play as the antagonist. I mean, think about it. These red creatures are living their own peaceful life in their smelly cave, and some stubby asshole pops out of a tentacle like some weird low-budget hentai and starts going postal on them, and no matter how hard they try to stop him, he just keeps coming back, and he keeps mowing down hordes of them without a second thought. It's obvious that he has no humanity left, assuming he had any to begin with. There's no going back. He's a goner. But if you ignore the plot and shoot monsters all day, it's pretty fun. Goner gets a honey badger out of 10 because it's adorable, lives underground, and will murder you at a moment's notice. And speaking of underground murder, all you really need to know about Downwell is two simple words. Gun boots. Bitch. <laughs> Downwell, as you can probably guess, is a game about a boy who falls down a well. 
Jumping is replaced by the recoil of your shooty shoes, but when you run out of ammo, you'll plummet to the ground like Icarus holding an empty pistol. As you descend further down the well, you'll find crystals that you can use to buy items and upgrades, as well as finding other weapons to attach to your slingshot slippers. For example, the shotgun makes you a glass cannon, the machine gun makes you a messenger of death, and the laser makes you useless. Just like the stock market, Halo Reach, or a humble African diamond miner, your currency also acts as your experience. As you level up, you'll unlock more visual palettes for your genocidal rampage, and there are different styles that you can use to alter your character's traits, like cannonballing and arm swinging. Just like every other platformer that was released after 2008, levels are procedurally generated, and they get creepier, darker, and even more dangerous the further down you go, like walking into the bedroom of your high school otaku friend. Everybody also seems to love the music, but I never thought it was that good. I guess it goes well with the whole shooting and spelunking thing, but you could probably throw some coins at a MIDI keyboard and it would sound exactly the same. Downwell gets a Desert Eagle out of 10. It seems nice and approachable at first, but once you start messing around with it, the recoil will launch you across three state lines. Well, after playing that handful of games, I think I'm ready to live a life of prosperity underneath this abandoned brake rotor factory. Thanks for watching! Now if you'll excuse me, I have to defend my food rations from some rat people.